Hey everyone, Sir Jellybean here, and we're back with some Call to Arms Gates of Hell Osfront. Conquest gameplay, no mods, base game conquest. This conquest will be more for a tutorial slash guide, and obviously we'll be showing combat as well, but it's for you beginners or people who are kind of struggling with conquest, how to do conquest, how to be effective of it, and hopefully how to enjoy it more and not struggle as much. So, we're on with Finland because they're the worst faction so if I can succeed with Finland you can definitely succeed with Germany and Russia also we're on hard and we're at the start of the conquest obviously very long so that means we have the maximum amount of battles that will need to be done now I'm going to just go and explain all the basics conquests obviously if you're a veteran of conquest there'll be timestamps you can spit squits skip to the combat but we'll go through everything so beginners can understand so we'll start with what is conquest it's a series of battles one after the other as you can see on this map each dot is a battle that you need to win the red dots are where the enemy has the blue dots are what we have at the moment and you have to get from the left side the hq here to the enemy hq to win now you have to do that by doing attacks and then it will be a subsequent defense so an attack defense attack defense and you don't if obviously if you lose you still might have to do defense after but that means sometimes you might think well i only have two battles left if you lose it might be mean you have three battles left so the easiest way it takes about 15 20 battles if you win every single one now you also get to choose which maps you want to go on and obviously each choice will give you a different map they also give you different resources and we'll go through the resources in a minute but obviously you can you see the stars that are over them so that has three stars that is one that is two they're the risks so obviously more stars more risk but you get more resources more bonus to it so we're going to choose the one with research with two risks because research is very important so we'll go through the resources straight away you've got manpower 900 manpower which is used to buy units as you can see this reserve rifle squad costs 84 manpower so you would lose 84 but you gain the rifle squad next we have the stars which is support they are used for buying air strikes which are useful but they're not that important so i'd never say don't worry about i wouldn't worry about getting stars so much but it's nice to have an air strike now and again then we have research, which is obviously used for buying research, which unlocks new things for you to be able to pur purchase with manpower. And obviously, the more advanced stuff is and the more technologically useful it is, it costs more research. So more research points to get better stuff like big tanks. Obviously, we have reinforcements, which is everything you can buy and bring in. Stuff that's unlocked is available. Stuff that's not unlocked, like this, you have to get through research. Obviously, you've seen the support thing with the plane. Next, we have veterans, as you can see here. These will be units that you have purchased. And then, as you can see here, we're the, just to the top right of the veteran box. It says 1,000 with those three little bullets. That is munitions that you supply. So after battle, when you guys have shot bullets or your mortars have used rounds or your tanks have fired shells, that is what you will use to resupply them so they're fully supplied for the next battle. And just a tip with that, if you have things like an ammo crate or an ammo truck, you can resupply in battle, which means you will use less munitions resupplying, which is good because bigger the weapon like a 15 centimeter howitzer will use more munitions than a pistol makes sense to the right here we have the deployment screen and as you can see zero out of 50 that's population cap so that means so for instance this civil guard squad as you can see the top left bottom left should i say 10 with a little helmet that means it would take 10 population caps so if you brought five of these squads you would fill that first deployment box that's all you would able be able to bring in and you can also unlock four more deployment phases. So you can have up to five. And obviously the start and the end is for air strikes. We also have obviously the map you've chosen I've chosen. So it's a little icky, looky, and it will give you like a bit of a picture. But the picture doesn't really tell you that much. It's more useful once you're in battle. And then so that's the basics of conquest just there. And then we'll go into first thing you should do is look at your research. Now you might think, what's the most important thing? Now I'll tell this to everyone, the first thing you want to do. If you can, obviously, depending on what difficulty you get, depends on how much you start with. So we're on hard, so you'll get five research points. If you're on medium or easy, you'll get more. Hardcore, you'll get less. So always get the officer and the call-in stage too. So the officer's one point. He's not the important thing. It's the call-in stage because now we have call-in stage one, 50 population cap. Call-in stage two, 60 population cap. Brilliant. We've doubled up how much we can deploy in a bit. Next, I would always say go for infantry. The better squad. Why? Rifle squad. Now, before you buy anything, you can check them out. So, why do I want the rifle squad? Well, look at the Civil Guard squad, for instance. And they have 100 HP, 75 stamina. Best skill for the rifle, which he's armed with, is 2. Now, these skills are important because, obviously, a rifleman will be armed with rifle skill. If someone has an LMG, for instance, like this guy, he will have a 2 in machine guns, but 
one in rifle. Normally they always have one point left less in the weapons that they're not as good with. So guys who have five in SMG will normally have like four in rifles and stuff. So they're normally fairly effective with most weapons, but you want to arm them with the weapons they're useful with. So rifle squad, these come with 200 HP, 125 stamina, so better HP and better stamina. They also come with better rifle skill or better weapon skill. So for instance, look, he's got three in rifles, three in pistols, so he's better with his rifle. They also normally come with better equipment, so like frag grenades, anti-tank grenades, smoke grenades. So straight away, I've gone right on the rifle squad, brilliant, and taking them. Next thing, you need anti-tank. Now, if you watched on uh, some of my anti-tank rifles or anti-tank gun demos or tutorials, you'll know that well, we, you know, what I think is the best. Now, it's a bit difficult. Do you go for something like the standard AT rifle? Depends on which faction. Russian AT is really good. The German AT rifle is not so good. The Finnish one's pretty decent. Now, with the Finns, I do like to go for field guns. They're very effective. So, honestly, I'm going to go down the field gun line, which is 76RK. And that's what I'm going to pick. Why field guns? Because they can deal with pretty much all the light tanks. And they will absolutely demolish infantry. They're really good, and they're also more accurate than mortars. So you can actually rely on them to be hitting things accurately at quite good range. And they also and they, they cost a bit of manpower, but not too many population caps. So they're a good choice. So we've used all the research points. Now it's what we're going to bring in. So it's your first battle. Now anyone struggling, infantry are key. They are the core of your army. Always minimum three infantry squads. So right there, they haven't cost me too much manpower points. Only 96 each. But they will cost 20 population, so for instance, the second wave could be full of infantry and that will be locked. Then you want to bring, secondly, some anti-tank. Needs some, so for in my case, it will be this field gun. That's cost me 360. Now I have two, two left. If you've got spare points, always get another infantry squad on the first one. And if, if you have spare points after that, medics. And if you still have spare points, ammunition, always useful. It'll save you some supply in the long run. So I only have six manpower left. I can't buy anything, but I have a nice selection of troops. Now it's the deployment phase, or the deployment window. So first wave, two rifle squads, medics, finish ammo crate. And as you can see, 48 out of 50, we can't fit anything else in. Then we go to the second wave, or second deployment box, two rifle squads, and the field gun. And that's at 54 out of 60, and everything we've got is now deployable. We'll be able to bring that in and battle. So we'll have a full roster, and we'll be bringing, always good to review what you bring in, so you can think that like, you've got the good unit. So I've got 20 men, 30 men, 40 riflemen, Medics, ammo crate, and a field gun. So I've got infantry, anti tank, and I've got medics and some armor. Good diverse force. So just save it, and that's it. You're ready to deploy, you're ready to go into combat. Exciting, eh? And I'll see you in combat in a moment. And here we are in combat. So, first time on conquest, you may not, not know what you're doing. I'm just going to pause so it lightens up a bit. I'll just pause again. So, your objective, or your, the mission, what you need to do is take both of these objective points. So we have D here, as you can see, around this forest with some sandbags. And B over here in this kind of small billet, kind of small compound. So how do you take these? Well, basically you kill everything in them, get your infantry or vehicles on them, and they'll capture it. Now you can capture it if the enemy is still in it. If you have ten men and they have four, you will take it. But it's advisable to just kill everyone. It'll be more easy that way. As you move up to them, remember there's not just infantry there, there might be tanks, there might be place guns like machine guns, anti-tank guns and mortars. And obviously the more difficulty, normally the more stuff there'll be. So what you do as you come in, to the right side here, you can deploy your infantry or your armour. And here we are. Now what's the first thing you do? I always spread my infantry out a bit just to get a bit of line of sight. And then you have to decide to yourself where you're going to go. Now as you can see in the mini-map, those arrows, that's where the enemy reinforcements come in. So they're coming southeasterly. Some from the east, some from the southeast. That means enemy infantry, maybe even tanks or other things like armoured cars and tank guns will be coming in to kind of counter attack us. So straight away, I'm going to go straight for objective D because this is the closest to the point and I need to kind of take it as soon as possible. So I'm going to move a few bit of infantry up to kind of the east, but I'm also going to leave one squad back down here. What we'll do is we'll, we'll dig them in around these walls, around these positions, get them in some cover if we can there. Actually get three of them first. And just spread them out in cover like that and then put a couple of guys in the building and they're just there to kind of cover from the south, the flank, make sure no infantry sneak up behind us while we're attacking and then also what I'm going to do is get one guy down prone, put him on hold fire and use him as recon, always recon, recon the positions unless you've got really heavy armour and you know that the enemy is still early, early war and stuff I wouldn't advance straight up because one Maxim or one MG42 that catches you off guard will kill you 
So as you can see, we've already got contact here. We've got a rifleman, a mountain trooper squad leader. Being a bit cheeky. Now things like, in this case, our only anti-tank is the field gun. Like, we have anti-tank grenades. But the field gun will be our main anti-tank, main fire support. So it's very important to keep him protected. Hence why I put these infantry on the flanks here. So if any armour or infantry roll up, we'll get a bit of early warning. Because there's nothing worse than getting flanked and losing something like a field gun. Because then it will be very difficult. If you've only got infantry to attack with, it's tough. So as you can see, there is a rifleman up here still. We'll have to pop him eventually. Because he's in the way of our recon soldier. I might just take over him. Now, direct control is useful, but don't get lost in it. I love running around in, like, running around in infantry and driving around in tanks. But when you do it, you normally forget about the rest of your army. So you've got to be a little bit careful. Field gun there, firing away at him. A bit ballsy. I won't just take this rifleman. See him. Oh crap. Come on. Oh, he's tough. We got him. So he's dead. Just heal him up. So the recon guys dealt with him. Really good stuff. Another thing as well, little tip. If you guys are healing up like that, press shift and move after. That way he'll finish doing his first command and he'll move after. If you just press click, he'll cancel it. So use shift for like... Also, if you've got like infantry and you want to move them like point there and point there, you can chain it together with shift. And that way they'll do kind of one move than another. So you don't have to just... Oh, we've got flamethrower infantry there. That's really bad. So some little flamethrower soldier was hidden just there. I mean, the recon guy did pick him up, which is good. Because that means he wasn't able to ambush more troops. So that field gun is going to have to chip in a little bit there. We're going to have to get him on. I think he was around there. That's a bit hard firing. We're going to third person. Sometimes... Oh, we've got him there. He's just been a bit sneaky. Let's put around him. There we go, we got him. He's dead. So that's good. We did lose the recon guy, so someone else unfortunately is going to have to have that you know, kind of sucky job. And unfortunately that is you, good sir. So put him on hold your fire and move him up. Now we are moving quite slowly, as you can see. 60 out of 1,000, that's the enemy's um, point ticker. If they get to 1,000, they win on the defence. Don't rush. It takes about half an hour for them to even get to it. So don't panic. You've got loads of time. I think a lot of people panic and try and rush objectives and lose too many men. And that's why you're struggling. Obviously, I will say now, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe and leave a comment. And also, tell me if you think it's good or bad, so I can improve the videos. So, we've just got these guys looking out here for now. I'm just going to let the recon guy go forward. I know it's a bit slow and sometimes a bit boring, but this game does have a bit of realism to it. So, it's always good to actually recon stuff and be smart about things. So, as you can see, you can see that guy there. Oh, he's shooting us. That's not very nice. Engage. Now this recon guy is probably going to get killed here. I'm pulling back. Now the infantry is going to start engaging those troops. That's fine. The field gun's quite forward. We'll just get him set up. And he can start blasting away infantry and anything there. There's a lot there. As you see, the field gun can start pounding away. We do need to get him a bit closer so we can deal with the big, big blobs of infantry. And this infantry squad's now going to we get them up and start pushing them up to support. We're going to bring him back. As soon as we can, they get healed up. Now, these infantry have took a little bit of losses. We get them in a line. And with the field gun support, they should easily chew through these troops. Did they fire in? Did they fire? No. They fire. As you can see, field gun will blast through them. And the ammo will keep him in shells, which is good. And if this infantry is pushing up, just start to call them to the lip. Get him healed up. And as it is, just take your time. Chew through the first, because the enemy will always outnumber you on attack, and especially on defence. So it's a good idea to you know, use your tactics, use everything you can to your advantage. And when you do have superior numbers, always use that to your advantage as well. Get weight fire on the enemy. So two squads should be enough to take the point. The field gun's going to be the main reason to take it. Because we just absolutely nail them. So I'm just going to take over the field gun for a little bit. Get some accurate fire on them. As you can see, good kills there. Four kills just for that field gun. This is it. If you just need one decent kind of killing weapon. Because even though you can get kills, you know, the field gun's going to be far more effective because it's a high explosive shells. Now, I know it's sometimes seems a bit boring just holding back and firing a weapon, but this is kind of how you clear a position. If you try and just go in with infantry, you're going to lose men that you didn't need to. So the best thing to do is take out, probably take out the infantry and then push them to know that you've dealt with most of them. And also, as you can see, these are Recon Squad, Special Ops Squad Leader. These are like elite infantry, so the Defender gets a lot, the AI gets a lot of elite infantry stuff that you won't even have unlocked yet. So these are troops with better health, better weapons skill, and better weapons a lot of the time. So you're literally outnumbered, outgunned and outskilled, so the only thing you've got to your advantage is your human brain. 
So you've got to, you know, use it to your advantage. So we're just going to edge the field gun up. And obviously I'm going through all my tactics. I'm not trying to condescend, be condescending to anyone. I'm just trying to explain to any new people. I'm just trying to speak a bit more clearly as well. Because I tend to just kind of truck my words together. But just take your time. That's all I can stress the most. Take your time as much as possible. And you will be successful. Because you're going to see what the enemy has. You're going to see what little ambushes they've set up. If they've got MGs, if they've got anti-tank. As you can see, we've got a couple of guys coming to the flank here. The squad should be engaging. Sometimes the troops won't engage effectively as you can. So sometimes you've just got to tell them to open fire. Just get them stood up so they can see. There we go. Whoa! 10 versus 1, and you lose it. Right, you finally got him, but that was poor. Finzi are not impressing me. Oh, look, as you can see, those infantry are left there inside. Now getting ambushed or well, attacked, and these guys at the house are also fighting them. So you got to watch out for the people pushing up. And as you can see, they've kind of walked into our squad, not thinking there'll be anyone there, and they'll get cut down. That'll be some reinforcements, or there'll be infantry from the, the other point. So we're going to start moving up now. The field gun's covering us. We should be able to get onto this point and take it. Just got to be careful, like there could be a sneaky flame man or a sneaky SMG man. So as you can see, infantry there. So hit the deck. Hold, hold, stop moving. Stop, stop moving. And infantry, as you can see, they try and get into a line, which I know they're trying to be tactical, but they end up just keep moving when they should be stopping. Now the field gun, if we just lock onto him. Now we saw the infantry there, so let's pump around away. There we go. Got some kills. Always good to pump a couple of rounds extra into a position just to make sure it's clear. It'll be a lot more good for your infantry. So stand these back up. Start moving forward again. Down. I did hear some machine gun fire then. Not sure if it was all them. Ah, he's there. Guy with the LMG. Can the field gun see him? No, he can't. LMG. Oh, what the hell was that? Was that an ampulet, a Molotov launcher? Just why? Shoot that guy, shoot him quick, quick. Kill him, kill him, kill him. Right. Quickly get onto that cover. There's a Molotov launcher, right? Is it there? Yeah, Molotov launcher. I'm, those things are lethal. They'll destroy any tank with those Molotovs. that absolute murder machines. They're not particularly accurate, thank God. Oh my God, you see there? Launching flames at us. That is some evil sorcery right there. Just be aware of them. They bloody hate them. Absolutely despise them. Kill him. Please kill him. I'm taking over. Sorry, I've got to. Ooh, that was close. Kill him. Quick. Oh, thank God. Look how I can shoot a little bit. So as you can see, the enemy is now pushing infantry up. This is where you want to get a few extra men to just hold the position. Now, a little tip for you guys who are new to the thing. You can salvage weapons. So... Look at this guy here, like, whilst they're busy fighting, if he's just, no, he's just going to ignore me and reload, because they like to do that. So if we just pull him here and take that rifle there, that anti-tank rifle, then we go onto the body, press X, go onto the body. Oh, I'll have all those anti-tank rifle rounds. Now here's something even better, that rifle, it's a PTRS. That's better, so let's drop that and take the PTRS. And now he's got an anti-tank so you can quite easily get a lot better weaponry, especially off enemy defenders. And you can take that into the next battle as well. So we now have an anti-tank rifle we can use, and there's another one there if we need it. So we do have some anti-tank infantry available to kill them. That's obviously if they survive into the next battle, which, given their position, they might be struggling a little bit. Now there's a lot of enemy infantry pushing up, but we're dealing with them. The field gun's going to unfortunately have to come, down, come over here, because we're going to need them on the next assault. And what we'll do is we've got enough infantry here to be successful, I think, so we should be okay. One medic is going to come up here. Whoa, we've got a tank, we've got a tank, we've got a tank, we've got a tank. Field gun, stop, stop, stop. Engage. Where's the tank? Where is he? He's there. That's a BT-2. So that'll only have machine guns. Now the first thing I'm going to do is run my infantry away. Because they've got no chance of taking that tank out there. But the field gun does. As you can see, he's going to start launching rounds. There's no shame in pulling the infantry back, taking some cover and healing up. We've got no chance against that BT-2 with the standard weapons. But the field gun and anti-tank guns do. So we're just moving the recon guard to get line of sight to him. Now he has disappeared a little bit. And he's reappeared now. So we're just going to take over. Where is he? He's just there. I'm going to pump some rounds on him. That's one hit. And the high explosive should be enough to take him out. He's only light. If we hit. But this is what you have to be wary of. A sneaky tank like that can really do some damage to your force. Uh, you'd help if he was more accurate. Unfortunately, we're not getting many hits at the now. Ah, Christ almighty. That's ridiculous. Can you guys just deal with that infantry soldier there? Just push up. Because he's annoying me. Right. BT-7, come on. 
Okay, like, right, I'll tell you what I can do. I can demonstrate the use of stealing weapons. I can use this anti-tank man. Run him up here. And we can use him to engage the BT-2. I think we may have stunned him. Yeah, we've blown his track off. So what we're going to do... Oh, he's just hit him again. We're going to cease fire on the um, that gun. And we're going to use the anti-tank rifle to advantage. Oh, crap. We can't. Because there's... Is he firing at us from there? Well, I'm very impressed. Let's get on the anti-tank gun. Why is he aiming so weird? And we can fire away. Oh, we've got him. So you see the AT rifle went through and we've also got infantry here. We can deal with them. So the PTRS there being very effective. And what we'll do is we'll pull him back here and we'll get a couple more guys just set up on these sandbags. Just so they can put, you know, rounds down range. So the field gun, put him back on fire at will. And bring him back down here. We'll start moving these infantry up. That's another tank. Bloody hell. We're not doing very well. We're not getting much luck today, are we? We're getting the full armoured spearhead. And we've also got a bloody... Oh, this infantry. I thought it was in place. Good. That, that, um, could you shoot him, please? Oh, he hit him. Good. Right. You're fine, guys. Just stay there a sec. It'll be okay. He's just stunned it. We need to really hit him. Come on. So we've had two armoured vehicles sent us on the first mission. That doesn't normally happen. So they definitely made the, uh, the conquest a little bit harder. I'm just going to nail him again. And there we go. Tank demolished. Now those tanks should be stealable. And because the, because the reinforcements, you can take them. So that tank would actually be stealable if we go up to it. So what we're going to do is move all these infantry up. This is a key advantage to use. You, you don't really get many chances to steal tanks this early on. Like on the first mission. So if you get a chance to do it, you do it. Now this infantry squad's been a pain in the arse. not listening to the commands. Because I've told them to sprint. But they all regroup, which is stupid. It's what, I, I can understand why they try and make the AI do it, but it just means they just don't do as you tell them. So what we're going to do, can you kill him? Right, what we're going to do, we're going to move these up to this BT-2. We're going to move this squad up with them. So get up there. Whoa, we've got more infantry. Engage, 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 quick. Should be killing. Now, it will mean we have to repair the vehicle, but this is going to be quite useful. So what we're going to do, we're going to grab you, and we're going to repair that tank. It will have repair kits and stuff on it. There is the amulet as well, which we could steal, but not because they are the devil's weapon. I will not use it on principle. That would hate them. And what we're also going to do is we're going to move these infantry up just to make sure the field gun's safe. And we're okay, like, equipment and weapon-wise. So these infantry now, we're just going to oh, crawl them down and get there. Now he's going to slowly heal that. Now I'll say this. Go on your inventory when you've got tanks like this. There's always something to steal. The satchel charge, really powerful. It's obviously used to destroy the tanks, just in case. But it's really useful to have it, in case you need it for close-range anti-tank. We can actually heal this tank as well, so you might as well. And we'll get this squad in. What we'll do is we're going to steal these tanks and be a bit cheeky. But it's more for the next mission. And what we'll do is, while they're doing that, we'll move these guys up. Get these out. And we'll, we'll move these guys up with a field gun. And we'll go attack the next point. Because you don't need the tank. Now, that, is that a tank coming? Oh, it is a tank. Right, we'll have to get the... Field gun set up here. Quickly, quickly. Catch the monkey. What is that, eh? Well, that's a mortar as well. Fall back. Fall back. Mortar's not as accurate as the field gun. Whoa, that was a bit accurate, though. We'll just get the field gun up. These guys hit the deck. Keep flying. Now, that is that tank stuck? I think he is, which is pretty good for us. He's going to keep healing the tank because he's got balls of steel. Now this thing is still out of range, so you have to it's in range now. So start attacking that mortar. And we'll, we'll show him what the real weapon is. It's not a mortar. The field gun is way better. As you can see, the crude. And we'll just move this field gun up a bit closer. I've never seen this much anti-enemy tanks be sent at you on Conquest on the first mission on normal Conquest. So they definitely made it harder, so I can understand why people are struggling. But don't panic, just because a tank comes, as long as you've got some AT, even if you have to steal it off the floor, it's fine, because all they're doing is giving you free armor, especially as Finland. The Russians are literally giving me tanks that I'd have to unlock in research, so thank you very much. Send more. Send me a T-34, I'll take that out, and I love it. But the main thing is the amount of infantry sent. So as you see, they've recruited the mortar, which is good. AI is now recruiting weapons. Respect. Is field gun with a fire? Come on. There you go, decrewed. Brilliant, and then start hitting that tank. And there'll be, the, as you can see, the little blue part is how long it takes to repair. It takes a while, so we're probably not going to be able to use the tanks on the assault anytime soon, so we'll keep going forward. I know the video is dragging out a bit, but I'm trying to really explain everything to you. I'm trying not to just rush the objective. I really want to 
kind of show some different tactics, like steering the tanks. Normally I wouldn't be bothered, but you know, it's, it's useful. And as you can see, the field gun here, he's just named the crap. That tank's been decrewed. Brilliant. I'm going to just finish this off. Just screw him. Just make sure it's cleared out. There we go. So now this infantry can push up here, and what we'll do is we'll move the field gun closer. Got to keep him in range. And when you get a new weapon like a field gun or a mortar or something like that, always check the range. So I think this one's 160. So you know exactly how far you're going to have to keep it in range. So get in range of this and we can just use it to shell the crap out of it, which is always good. Now these tanks are slowly being repaired. And hopefully they'll be repaired. Like sometimes it takes more than one repair thing. But we also have enough infantry with some AT to hold this position, which is good. And like I say, always check weapons on the ground. You might find... Oh look, he's got a, for instance, an SMG. If you went, oh, I want more PPSH SMGs, you can spend a bit of time on the first few missions, especially stealing them, because it's going to be really useful to you. So what we're going to do, just as you move up, always protect your flanks. So we're going to move some infantry into the windmill. Now, these infantry squad, get down. I don't know why they run around like lunatics. Field gun, engage. Come on. Fire away. Fire him. I'll do it then. There we go. Oh. Field gun killed quite a lot of troops there. Always useful to have something like a mortar or a field gun or some kind of AT gun to provide a bit of support. The field gun can just absolutely shell the crap out of everything. So what I'm going to do is get these guys actually against them up. Move them up to this right flank here. Oh, we've still got some... We've got medic there. Apologies. And another thing as well, always keep guys healed before you attack. So these guys are moving up. There's enemy infantry in these positions. We're just going to move up there. The field gun's just going to start clipping in. Now certain bits will be hidden, like there because of the lip, but will be able to hit things around here, which is good. And what we're going to do, we're just going to advance these guys up. And whilst they're advancing, we're going to advance this infantry up as well. And these guys are still repairing the tanks. He can get in it now, brilliant. So we'll have a free tank next mission. Might need a few supplies to repair it. Oh, infantry really close. Come on, come on, come on. Always good to watch the infantry as they go up. They're a bit stupid sometimes. They won't. Like, they'll just not move when the grenade gets chucked. And sometimes it's good to be aggressive and chuck them into cover. So we're going to push these up to the house quickly. So they can actually get them onto decent cover. Makes it a bit risky as they move up, but... There should be, like, there's some cover there, so we'll take advantage of this log pile. Get them in position, and then we'll be able to lay down fire on them. Whoa, that was pretty bad. Machine guns and SMGs did a lot of damage, so get down. So right there, we have a medic. That's why you bring them. For when I make a stupid mistake. We'll just bring him up, that's fine. We did take some hits, but the field gun can engage. As you can see, there's some good damage there. What we'll do whilst they're busy, bring these guys up to this wall. Now he does have, as you can see, SMGs and machine guns can be devastatingly effective. So these guys are rushing in, we're using the weight numbers here, just basically overwhelming them. And we're actually taking the point. And they're now panicking. He, him there, he's a BS Marine, so as you can see, the defenders, he's like a late stage infantry. So they're getting given elite infantry, more troops, and armor against what we've got. So you're basically outnumbered and outnumbered, basically. So you've got to use your human brain, like I said, to your advantage. Now I think that's them all dead. Just make sure he's dead. Die. <laughs> Die. And also another thing, check what weapons they've got. So look, LMG. Well, I don't actually have any LMGs yet. So he won't be as effective with the LMG as he is the rifle. But it's still really useful. Just take all the ammo. I'll take those grenades. Thank you very much. And then you can look around and see if there's any AT rifles, there's SMGs, there's also, as you can see there, semi-automatic rifle. So if I get this guy, for instance, rush him up. Well, before I go though as well, let's get this guy in the tank. So we've got two free tanks, they're a little bit battered, but it doesn't matter, we've claimed them. And where's that guy there? So where's that automatic rifle? SVT-40, so take that. Then look at the body, that was from him I believe. Go around there, senior rifleman. And the SVT-40 magazines there, two magazines, we'll also take those grenades, all of them, brilliant. So he's got a few rounds for the SVT-40 if he wants to use it, and if he doesn't he can switch to his Mosin, and he can be fine. And obviously when you're taking the point, I'm just trying to show stuff off, but make sure you heal anyone who's wounded, get people rearmed. Obviously supply crate here, if anyone was really desperate for ammo you can get them there, it'll save you on supplies. And that's it, once we take this point that'll be mission over, it took about 20 minutes which isn't bad. Like I say, the enemy only got to 261 points, so don't rush. Just take your time. And even on that one, they sent three tanks against us, which is a bloody lot. And we still made it through. And also, if you want to carry on looting, you can press continue and loot to your heart's content. And then when you're done, press finish, and you'll get the end screen. 
And here you'll see, obviously, kills. We've got 82 kills. We lost seven, which ain't bad. We destroyed four vehicles slash emplacements, and we lost zero, which is also good. And I'm just going to go right to the end on this mission, uh, this episode. I'm going to show you the end, like what you earn. So resources gained, 200 manpower to research there, but then you also get resource bonus, and you also get risk factor bonus for hard missions. And then payback is whatever units you lose, you get some manpower back. So if you lose 50 men, you'll get a lot more manpower back. So actually, sometimes when you even take heavy losses, it's not game over. The game will give you more points back to you know, compensate for how many men you've lost. So we gained 770.4 manpower, 250 munitions, and 3.8 research. Now at the end, all you do is take all your infantry off the deployment bit, put them back into the veterans. Now before you press resupply all and re you know, munitions, what are you actually going to keep? Well, I'm not going to keep the T-37A. It's crap. Dismiss. BT-7 only brings machine guns, but it's actually quite useful, so I will keep that. Now, before I resupply everything, I've got 3.8 research. Well, what am I going to upgrade? Well, I know for a fact I need a better field gun. Now, I can't unlock that, unfortunately. But I can unlock the 72K, too, which is a better artillery gun. It's not worth really going down that line, now, I think. Not, not for now. Well, I will get one supply, though. Like, one small defense, I mean. And the other two points I'm actually going to use to unlock... Um, I'm going to go for field engineers and get mines and flamethrowers early. Something a bit different, mainly just so I can show mines and stuff off next mission. But things like that can be really useful. Don't always have to rush for tanks or AT. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rearm everything. So I'm going to use it. But that BT-7, um, BT-2, DA-2, and it's got three machine guns, which may not seem that useful, but on the defense will come in invaluable. And as you can see, it's a nice little free tank. And for us to unlock something like that, would have meant we had to spend, or well, for us to get to a BA, I don't even, do we even have access to them? No, but for us to get to something similar, we would have had to spend at least one or even three research points. So, very useful to steal. So that's the end of the first episode. I hope you all enjoyed it and learned some stuff. Obviously, like, subscribe and comment. And tell me what you thought was good and tell me what you thought was bad. And I'll see you on the next one. Have a fantastic night.